Hi there. You have seen my previous video where I showcased how to generate random data for testing using mockaroo.com and generatedata.com. If you haven't seen the video, you can check the description or the link that appears on your screen right now. Both mockaroo.com and generatedata.com are built for generating data that is tabular. By tabular, I mean having rows and columns that appear as a table. But what about JSON data? JSON is the most preferred data exchange format in any platform that involves REST APIs. So today we are going to look at MockTurtle.net. MockTurtle is a simple yet powerful test JSON generator built by Tim from New Zealand. So let's look at MockTurtle.net and learn how to use it. Let's go to the URL that is MockTurtle.net. This is such a clean and clutter free UI. I'm assuming you are familiar with a JSON format. If yes, you can straight away observe an outline of a JSON object. By configuring this outline, you can control the JSON array that you want to generate. Let's just click on generate to see what is output with the default configuration. So here is a standard JSON array with some fields. Every different time you generate the data, it creates random data that is mostly different from the previous ones. Now let's play around with the configuration. Let's delete the pre-built configuration and build our own. Let's create a configuration to simulate product shipments. I'm visualizing the JSON to be something like this. The name of a company, the date of shipment, the different orders that will be shipped that particular day and within each order we will have the order ID, the product name, the street address and the quantity shipped. We will start the configuration by adding an object root. Within the object let us add the first attribute called company underscore name and now we have to pick the data type. There are many data types to choose from for example, I'll search for company name and there is a data type called company name which will generate a random list of companies. Let's add the next attribute called shipments. We will turn the shipments into an array object. So for that we can go to the structure and you can choose it as an array data type and the length is where you specify how many objects to be generated within this array. Now here you can see I've given uh, five and now I'm adding the first attribute, uh, which will be an object. So we'll change the data type from constant to object. And uh, within this object, let us add the first attribute. Uh, we will call it, uh, let's say the shipping date. And from the data type, we are going to select a date, right? So as you can see, there is a date and time data type. And from here, we'll set the start and end date, the date range between which the dates have to be generated and the format as well. Now, once it is done, we can move on to the second element, which will be orders. We'll change the orders from a constant to an array data type. And within that array, we will set the min and max again. This time, let the max be two. Now within this array, we will again define another JSON object. And within the object, now we can add the attributes. The first attribute will be the order ID. So the order ID is something that has to be unique. So for this, we will search for the data type UUID. So this generates a lot of uh, you know unique identifiers. Next, we will add the product name. So you'll be happy to know that there is a data type called product name. Right, so we can choose that. And the third attribute will be uh, the street address. So here also we have a data type that can generate a random list of street addresses. And at the last, we will add the order quantity. Right, so the order quantity will be uh, a number. So we can just uh, type for number and um, I can choose the number. So since this is a quantity shipped, it shouldn't be a negative number. So I just give a minimum of one and a maximum of 10. 
now that the configuration is ready we can click on generate and you can see the data so here is a company name uh, there is a shipping date and within that shipping date there are multiple orders each order has an order ID a product name the street address and the quantity shipped right so similarly there are multiple um, entries for different shipping date for each shipping date there are multiple orders exactly the way that we wanted it you can click on generate to generate different sets of data every time now let's look at the different data types that are available so we have custom we have struct general personal location corporate finance and then we also have IT file system and vehicle overall there are 57 different value types to choose from this I think should be quite helpful for us in most of our test data scenarios there are two more features I want to talk about the first feature is an undo and redo feature this I think will be quite helpful when we are playing around with the configuration the second is the ability to export this entire configuration as a JSON structure once downloaded this JSON file can be let's say shared with others or can be version controlled once you have a deep understanding of this JSON structure you can start modifying this directly and importing it into mockturtle.net this allows your team to have a much more flexible and data driven configuration if you found mockturtle.net very very useful as I did just make sure you go to their website which is mockturtle.net and hit on the like button to encourage the developer well that's all I had thanks a lot for watching this video I hope you found it useful too